Welcome back to the show, everybody. Got some more great stuff to talk about here today. Today, we're going to discuss the, I guess, the narrative, really, honestly, that Bitcoin could see a bubble burst again, like back in 1718. We're going to talk about who said that. Then we're also going to talk about trading halts for XRP and delisting XRP. And there's a lot of implications to that. Let's just go ahead and roll that beautiful intro and we'll get into this. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You guys can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradleyAbove and everything that we're talking about here today. We start with Nuriel Rubini who is an economist who teaches at New York University Stern School of Business, and he's also an American economist. Well, I did say American economy, excuse me, but he's also worked with the University of Milan, the World Bank, the IMF, the Federal Reserve. I think you get it. One of the interesting things about him is that his, much of his early research was focused on emerging markets. Well, let's just go ahead. Why are we talking about Mr. Rubini? Well, because he's got a lot to say about Bitcoin, and it's not what I'm saying, but I think it's important that we understand what people are saying case of bitcoin there is no income there is no use there is no utility the only thing is a speculative self-fulfilling kind of rise and that rise is driven totally by manipulation there have been academic study suggesting that this pseudo stable coin tether is being created by fiat this year alone the increase in the supply of tether has been another 16 billion out of the initial force so it's 20 and every time the price of Bitcoin goes down, literally overnight they issue more of this tether that is used literally to manipulate the price of Bitcoin. So, wow. So you understand what he's saying here, right? Let me just go ahead and hit you with it. So he's saying not only is Bitcoin going to have a bust moment, but he's also telling you that USD tether is not exactly on the up and up. Now, that is really putting the two in the huge question here. And when you think about the idea about where we are in this point of this emerging market, right, and where the regulation is beginning to become, uh, you know, almost daily, I mean, you know, even without the holidays here, certainly weekly, we get something new all the time that is taking shape and really helping to shape the whole entire digital asset space. Proof of work has got a bullseye on its back. Long term, I think it finds a way to live in this space. I've not been shy about the fact that I believe that there, I really believe that there will be a day where we could easily see XRP as a universal ledger and pre-mined Bitcoin placed on the XRP ledger, and then it could settle with the same fast settlement time as XRP. And I think that kind of convergence and working together would really help to bring a consistency to the market and extra value to Bitcoin if it were to see that. So, and they could even do like a capital gains for the miners before the uh, Bitcoin makes its way to something like the XRP ledger. I'm sure they just love hearing people like me say that, but that sounds like a framework. That sounds like more a traditional market in that sense. So there's, there's more to come here is what it is. Let's listen to this other little bit here. The price of Bitcoin is totally manipulated by a bunch of people, by a bunch of whales, doesn't have any fundamental value. And like in 2017, when it went from 1,000 to 2,000, and then in 18, it crashed from 20,000 down to 3,000. Well, and I will remind you right now that the reason we know it went from 20,000 to 3,000 is because Chris John Carlo was the CFTC, CFTC chairman at the time. And after he left that position, he told us in a conference that they introduced the futures contracts on top of Bitcoin so they could pop that $20,000 bubble. Will we see it again? Listen to what he says. I think we're close to the point in which this hyperbolic bubble is going to go bust. And it's going to go bust because law enforcement authority are having an investigation of Tether and of the company behind it. And it oh, didn't know that one. In my view, like in the case of BitMEX, it was the biggest scam and criminal derivative uh, 
uh, cryptocurrency house is being indicted. You can have an indictment also of those who are behind uh, a tag that when that's occurring in the next few months, there'll be a crash of B. And you get the point. He's talking about the fact that, uh, you know, we're going to see a Bitcoin bubble bust and that ultimately U.S. Tether and the business behind it is under investigation. So there's things to be aware of holding Bitcoin. And believe me, I hold a little bit of Bitcoin. I don't hold as much as I wish I had. But I'll tell you, I do hold enough to want to pay attention to what's going on here. So, uh, okay, with that being said, now let's talk about the idea of trading halts and delisting of XRP because of the SEC lawsuit. Now, with this, there comes a few things, okay? One, we've seen Bitwise say that they are stopping and they're liquidating its position for XRP. And then we also saw BitTrue say, due to recent events, we're no longer able to offer XRP purchases using credit cards for users in the United States. That comes from BitTrue and Simplex CC. And then here we see Bitstamp say that they're going to halt trading and deposits in the U.S. due to the SEC lawsuit as well. The big question is, is will this begin to steamroll as we go forward here? Will we see Coinbase? Will we see Binance America, right? All of these other major exchanges, will they also do this? Will Uphold also do that? You know, we're watching it. But what I would say is, is that for a lot of people that creates a lot of fear, like this is not good. I personally feel like this has to happen. And I know that I've said this in the last handful of videos, but not everybody in this space is the same person. People need to hear the, the, the information and, and the perspectives of others to be able to weigh out what they believe will take place. And it doesn't mean I'm right. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means that I'm sharing with you the perspective of how I see this unfolding. And I see this unfolding where they have to have legal precedent on this asset for this space just like they had legal precedent on the sec versus howie and that's how they came up with the howie test for what is and what is not a security with the four prong test that they have now it may be more points that they have in the ripple test but i believe we will have the sec versus ripple and out of that we will have the ripple test because of the new sec division that has been created to oversee digital assets so i would believe it would make perfect sense that that division to oversee digital assets would have a similar like test the way the actual SEC does over the traditional securities market. I don't think it's a, a, a big reach at all to, to think that. I want to remind everybody right now in 2015, FinCEN fined Ripple $700,000. And in that definition, they said specifically that and wholly owned subsidiary XRP2 LLC, formerly known as XRP Funds 2 LLC, Ripple Labs will fully uh, willfully violated several requirements of the Bank Secrecy Act as the money service business in selling its virtual currency known as XRP. I'm not going to read the rest of it because that's enough of it right there. But that was in 2015. So that's a hurdle the SEC has to get over right there. They're suing them from 2013 to present. The problem is FinCEN is a regulatory agency connected to the Treasury. So they are in direct conflict right now. And I think, like I said, this is the perfect scenario to get the legal precedent. Not only because of that, but also because the CFTC has ruled, the Commodities Futures Trading Commission ruled in 2018 that a federal court finds that virtual currencies are in fact to be regulated as commodities. That was in 2018 over the My big big coin uh, uh, case that existed. So that precedent of that case put that federal judge's decision to say that CFTC would now oversee all virtual currencies and to rule and regulate them as commodities. This is interesting because, you know, um, if you look at the Securities uh, Exchange Commission, the SEC, 
they have what is a five-year statute of limitations. And I want to thank the person that sent this to me and I also want to thank Spencer H. Because Spencer H. has been sending me messages about the statute of limitations. And then the person here sent it. And I can't find who sent it. But I'm very grateful for you sending it to me. And if I'm able to find the thread that you sent it, I will absolutely give you the credit. And I apologize that I couldn't find your email thread after I shared this link. But... um so the point is, is that for the SEC, we see here that there's been some decisions here that the SEC, uh, Supreme Court clarifies scope of five-year statute of limitations in SEC enforcement proceedings. Here in this particular uh, caption here, it says the United States Supreme Court clarified five-year statute of limitations applicable to SEC enforcement actions that seek financial penalties begins to accrue when the alleged violation occurs, not when the SEC finds it. It says not when the SEC discovers a violation. So five years from the actual violation when it occurred, right? So the violation occurred the last we heard of in 2015 with FinCEN is why I'm showing you this. And in 2015, we saw FinCEN fine Ripple for the fact that they were unregistered and this, that, and the other. So here we are five plus years later, and it looks to Spencer H. and the gentleman that sent me this, that they are making a very valid point that they are outside of the five-year statute of limitations. It also says here, SEC enforcement actions are subject to five-year statute of limitations, which provides that an action suit or proceedings for the enforcement of any civil fine, penalty, or forfeiture, pecuniary, or otherwise shall not be entertained unless commenced within five years from the date when the claim first accrued. Again, they're accusing them from 2013 to present. We know that FinCEN fined them in 2015. So if you go from the lawsuit, it's 2013 to present. They're already going back too far, right? If you look at the idea of what FinCEN has said, that's five years ago. This gets pretty tricky for the SEC going forward. And again, all of this doesn't keep them from being able to develop a new ad hoc test for the standalone office dedicated to digital assets and blockchain. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, but I think this makes sense. If you're going to have a new standalone office dedicated to overseeing digital assets, just like the SEC oversees uh, the securities market, then I think that that division should have a test just like the SEC already has a test for the securities market. It should have one for digital assets. And I believe that this legal case will give them one. Now, going back to the idea and understanding of the CFTC and the fact that a federal judge ruled in 2018 that all virtual currencies are to be regulated and ruled as commodities, that is a fact that has already happened. So then there's the COMEX, which is the primary futures and options market for trading metals such as gold, silver, copper, and aluminum. Formerly known as the Commodity Exchange Incorporated, known as the COMEX, merged with the New York Mercantile Exchange, the NYMEX, in 1994 and became the division responsible for metals trading. Now, the COMEX is important because we understand the idea that we could be seeing something here which people have talked about i'll have you know if you haven't been with the channel very long the first video i ever made was about the idea of a price set of xrp through the use of a trading halt which could be done potentially by the comex rule 589 that has been a big talk in the uh in the xrp space for quite some time now one of the things I will say is, is that the COMEX rule is a way to perform a trading halt to the market through using the COMEX and through using things like futures contracts to stop the market. And it goes through a series of stops and starts, trading and halts to determine a price. Right. And this can be done for a few reasons. It could be done because of hyperflation on the U.S. dollar or hyperinflation in general. Price adjustments, it could be done because of fluctuations and stability issues. These are all the key motivators of why this could be exercised, right? Um, you could imagine a scenario where hyperinflation were to ensue and kick in on the dollar because of all the printing and metal market starts to run away. 
there may be an issue for too many buyers for the same bar of gold, and you may have to stop the market or those futures contracts because they're outweighing what is actually physically available. And then you have to go into what would be a trading halt or a series of stops and starts of the market to reestablish what that price stability or fair market value in that market would be because of those massive fluctuations or to create more stability to get the stability back in the market, right? You have to understand too that futures contracts are normally used as a hedge in the market. Very rarely do the futures markets resolve and physically deliverable of that asset. Even if you participate in a market where they are physically deliverable, normally most of the time the the futures market is a market where it's either done as a hedge or they're certainly doing it as options and things of that nature where they're literally just trading those products, right? So it's important to understand that as well. So when I think of these things and think about the SEC and then the CFTC, I, I have many, many things that are running through my mind. But a few of the things that are sticking with me on this day is the fact that, one, we have the statute of limitations issue. How does that affect the SEC? Does it affect them? Does it not? And if it does, how far back does it affect them? Can they only go back to five years, you know, because they are suing up until present day in as far as the lawsuit says? So there's I think there's still an issue there. But the other part of this equation is, is that should we, uh, in fact, see this legal precedent on, see legal precedent set on this decision of this lawsuit, and then happen to see a framework delivered for digital assets with the new SEC office, will we at that point understand that because of that clarity and that scope that has been created there for the new division, it's allowed everything to fall into place, just like gold has a has a place in the metals market and silver and copper and aluminum and platinum, and they all have different use cases and really classifications because of that. Would we really start to see that happen for digital assets, right? You know, a la BTC, like a store of gold, Ethereum, like smart contracts, and the XRP ledger and the XRP as obviously, you know, a bridge currency and settlement token for the world, utility token, if you will. The, the question remains, but I'm speculating, but I believe these are the right things to be forward thinking about and at least be considering these things that, that these could be things we see happen because we want a legitimate market, at least I do. And if we're going to have a legitimate market, then we better start looking at the rules in which the legitimate market follows already. And the COMEX is one of them. It doesn't mean it will be used. Maybe we see a situation where hyperinflation kicks in a lot sooner, which we know that this whole idea of the strong dollar has not been holding water. It started to fall. So the idea of, of hyperinflation could be at our doorstep a lot sooner than any of us even realize. And if that's the case, maybe that we see that there is a spike in the hyperinflation, which spikes the metals market, the commodities market broadly, oil, gold, things of that nature. Maybe we see that happen, right? And maybe because of that, we also understand that they're bringing in this new digital asset class and introducing it into the commodities, traditional commodities market. That bringing the introduction of this new asset class may force the COMEX rule to be adjusted and, and put in place because they're going to introduce futures broadly on these products. You know, it is undetermined. One thing we absolutely know is that no one that has been alive on Earth has ever seen a new asset class introduced to the world like we're seeing right now. So I hope in some way we've been able to at least raise some of the right questions and the right things to think about to get the conversation really headed in a way where we can continue to cultivate what we may think could happen or what are the options and possibilities of where this can go and also look at you know what happened yesterday, conversations we had a year or two years ago, even longer, and look at how it applies today with the things we're seeing unfold. Because that is really important as well. So 
that's where I'm at on this day. I'm not letting trading halts and delistings bother me because I believe that if we go that far with places with like coin bases of the world and the upholds, I believe that this is all about getting us to that final destination for XRP, which will bring it into the markets and forevermore it will be legitimate and untouchable. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below and share with somebody you know and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Check out all the links in the description box and the comment section for anything that you may want or need. They are trusted, vetted links, and I will catch all of you on the next one.